Today we're going to do what I call a preview and or review of forces, section 2.2 of the IB syllabus. So you might be asking yourself, donor, what's going on here? How can a review and a preview be the same thing? Well, I think they can be the same thing, and I think they're both about the underlying structure. Let me try to explain that. You've probably heard of a memory technique called memory palace. Very simple. It's just for memorizing stupid things like grocery lists. So physics is a lot more complex than a grocery list, but there's still something that we can kind of learn from that. And the way the memory palace works is you imagine a building such as your home where you really know every nook and cranny. And then you take a walk through your home. And so maybe you come in the, through the front door and then you see an apple sitting on that chair. And that reminds you that apple is on your grocery list. And then maybe you walk into this room and there's a banana sitting on the carpet. And that reminds you that bananas are on your grocery list. And you just keep walking through the house and you're able to memorize all the 20 or so items on your grocery list. But like I said, we don't want to memorize grocery lists in physics. What's important about that is that there is this underlying structure. The home is the underlying structure. For physics, we need to discover what that underlying structure is. And that's what the review and preview is about. It's about identifying that underlying structure. And it's going to be more complicated than a home because there's going to be more complex relationships between the concepts than there is the items of a grocery list. So the way that I see this preview and review working is you start out by watching the video, the preview. Think of it as a preview now. And all that's going to be is it, me constructing a concept map before your eyes. So I'm trying to point out the major ideas in the chapter and the relationships between them. And that's going to provide you with an underlying structure. So now when you go to study, and that just means do all your typical stuff, labs and activities and problem solving and taking notes, all that stuff. When you do your studying, you now have a map. So you'll be able to fit those ideas as you learn more and more details into the map. And of course, when you have a map, you don't feel lost. You have a sense of bearings. So this should increase your confidence greatly when you do your study. Then at the end of the unit, you're going to watch the preview review again. We'll call it a review this time. So now you've learned a lot more details about the chapter. And you can gain a lot of confidence now by reminding yourself what that underlying structure was and how everything fit in together. And then of course you're going to have to study for the test. And if your confidence level is fairly high, then you'll be wanting to do new problems. If your confidence level is a little bit lower, you might do more reviewing old problems or rereading notes, that type of thing. The first thing that I do before I kind of design my preview is to look at the IB syllabus and see what's there. I want to see where the equations are there, what are the basic topics and ideas that I'll need to put into my concept map. Now if you don't have time to watch the preview video, just reading this over will be helpful. It's not going to show you the depth and the relationships, but it's a good start. So here's the structure of the section as I see it. The first thing you've got to do is, is classify forces, and you're going to do that in several ways. Forces just are just pushes or pulls, and they cause changes in motion. So the first thing that you, the first classification you want to make is how do the forces change the motion? And there's three options here. If the force and the velocity are in the same direction, then you get speeding up. If they're in opposite directions, then you get slowing. And if the force is somehow perpendicular to the velocity, then you get turning. You then want to classify forces 
according to contact or field. So in contact forces, just like what it sounds like, there's a contact, there's direct contact on the object. Field forces, there's no contact. So if we drop a ball, there's nothing in contact with the ball, but grab the force of gravity brings it down. So under contact forces, the common ones are tension, the normal force, say a push force, or a frictional force. Whereas for field forces, there's gravity. And later on, you'll talk about electrical and magnetic forces. So there's three field forces that we do in the course but it's much later in the course that you look at electrical and magnetic. We then have this critical skill that we have to learn called free body diagrams. And this will be all about finding what's called the net force on an object, which is the resultant force, the total, the overall force on an object. And the basic process is we've got some object, but we kind of pretend it's a point object because the forces all act through the center of mass, so that point is really the center of mass. And then I have a little algorithm that we use at least at the start of the course. Uh, the first step on the algorithm is the to draw the weight straight down. So all objects on the Earth have a weight. And at least for this part of the course, we don't have any other field forces. We then go on and we search for points of contact. We might have contact with a table below and that would produce a normal force. Or we might have contact with a string and that would produce a tension force. We might have friction. So we look for points of contact with the object and we draw in the appropriate contact forces here. And then kind of essentially stop. Don't do any more. Don't start drawing in velocities or accelerations or inertia or something like that. Nothing but forces. Then you'll be able to add up those forces and determine the net or resultant force. We then go on and talk about Newton's laws. So there is a first law generally the law of inertia and it is all about when this net force is equal to zero. When the net force is equal to zero there's no change in the motion. That means the velocity is constant. So if you see something moving with constant velocity or zero velocity you know the net force is zero. If you know the net force is zero you know the, know the object has to move with constant velocity or it has to remain at rest. Second law is about acceleration. So this is the case where F net does not equal zero. So we've got some unbalanced force. And when that's true, the acceleration will be proportional to the force, inversely proportional to the mass, and in the same direction as the force. And the third law we call action-reaction, which basically just says that when there's a force, there is one interaction, but two forces. So if I push on the wall, the wall pushes back on me. Those two forces will always be equal and opposite they will be acting on two different bodies and they produce what we call force pairs. We then go on and look at applications. I say applications of Newton's laws but it's also an application of uh, free body diagrams. That's going to be really important here. And this Newton's second law equation which I'll write as F net equals MA. So we keep doing this process of using free body diagrams 
define the net force and then we set that equal to mass times acceleration. The first of those applications we call translational equilibrium which is a fancy term but it just means that the body has no net force on it. The net force is zero and that means the object is has constant velocity or could in many cases be zero velocity. And this is going to also use our ability to do components of vectors, in particular force components, will become important here. We'll look at some elevators. We'll look at lots of blocks and pulleys. And these are going to be important because they introduce the idea of systems of bodies and isolating bodies. So if we've got a couple blocks connected together we've got more than one body and we can examine the system or we can examine the blocks individually. And that'll be a very important skill. And finally we'll look a little bit at inclined planes which will give, give us a little more practice with these force components again. Look at it in kind of a new way. And finally we're going to look at friction. And it turns out there'll be two kinds. So there'll be a static friction and a kinetic friction that we'll examine. And there'll be some important distinctions between those two types. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.